Hello everyone, I hope you're well. Today's video is going to be a long video. This is going to be my August wrap up and I read eight things in August. I can't believe I've read this much stuff. I, every time I read a book, pop it in a basket. I don't have a Goodreads account or anything normal. No, I pop it in this basket and I think for the first time this year I've managed to fill up the whole basket. I was obviously reading the books that are on the Booker Prize long list and so that's why I was reading so much this month. But I'm going to start off this video by reviewing the books that I just chose to read, that I just wanted to read, that were nothing to do with the Booker Prize. So I'm just going to get straight into it. First up, I want to talk about our book club book this month for my book club, Tay's Book Club. I chose The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. This was my first ever Gillian Flynn book and I'm gonna do a full video review on this, obviously with your views as well. You had so much more like insight into your views than I did because some of you have read Gillian Flynn so you could kind of compare it to how her other books stand. The plot of this is about a woman who, she is a sex worker, but she also upstairs where she works as a sex worker is like a fortune telling place. So she pretends to be a fortune teller as well along with other women and she pretends to be this medium. So a woman walks into the fortune telling place one day and says I think my house is haunted please can I pay you to come and sort out my house or tell me what's wrong with it. So our main character says yeah she'll fine. She goes to this woman's house and obviously she like is a fake medium she doesn't have a sixth sense or anything but she gets a really weird vibe in the house and she knows she's a fraud and she can't sense spirits but she's really thinking mm, there is something uneasy in this woman's house. So then she agrees with to the woman and says yeah yeah I'll come and like cleanse the house and sort it out for you and it's haunted. This is a thriller. It sounds like a ghost story. I thought it was going to be a ghost story but it's not. It's just a thriller. I would say I was really enjoying the book and I thought it was really interesting the characters and how she built up the story in such a small space of time but the ending oh I was like Gillian you're testing me. I did not like the ending at all. I just didn't think it was realistic. I didn't think that that would really happen the way it did. I just, I didn't like the very end bit of it. I didn't, I didn't enjoy. But overall it was still good because I did enjoy reading it. But obviously I'm going to do a whole video review on this. Next up I have a book that I had never heard of that I picked up in a charity shop. And it's called Heart Song. And it's written by Kevin Crosley Holland. And the illustrations are by Jane Ray. And it's inspired by Vivaldi's Four Seasons. It's set in Venice and it's about a girl who has been orphaned as a baby so she has to go and live with the nuns and then she gets sent off to live in Venice in another orphanage and before that she'd been fostered by this couple and so it's talking about her like kind of experience of being fostered by this couple and she has really fond memories of them and then living in this orphanage in Venice. She's also a mute and she has no idea why she is a mute. There's technically nothing wrong with her to make her a mute but she is a mute and this composer comes into the school to teach the girls music and he chooses her to be like one of the daughters of music he calls it because she's really good at playing her flute. So because she's a great flute player he decides that she you know needs some way of expressing herself because she can't speak so she can do that through her music. The illustrations were absolutely stunning. I loved the style of them. I thought they would be oh my god this is such like a heartbreaking one. If you haven't read it you have no idea but it's like oh she's just about to do her first concert and everything. I adored this. This honestly broke my heart. This book like doesn't hold back the feelings of abandonment because she's been abandoned from a baby and never had a family and things thinking like was I loved, was I not loved, also people being cruel to her because she's a Mew and then it's got the beautiful backdrop of Venice and Venice is so vibrant and there's this festival where everyone's wearing these like carnival masks and it's also vibrant and beautiful and this composer is really like helping her with her music but then she's got such deep sadness that she is unloved and unwanted and there's a bit where one of the other girls she goes off to work somewhere else and I was like oh don't leave her, it was so Oh, I feel teary even talking about it. It was such a beautiful book. It was beautifully written, beautifully illustrated, perfect. Honestly, from start to finish, it was just such a perfect, such a joy to read. I cannot recommend this enough. This is such a gorgeous book. Highly, highly recommend this. I then got a graphic novel 
from my friend Graham on Instagram and he also has a booktube, I'll link his booktube down below, he sent me this in the post and this is Nemi and Nemi was a cartoon series in the Metro so I'll show you the kind of style and she's basically a goth living in London and it's all about her different adventures. If you're a fan of Ghost World and Daria, 100% this is for you. It's like dry, sarcastic humour, which I love. Ghost World by um, Daniel Close is one of my favourite graphic novels. I absolutely adore Daria. This was so my humour. I loved it. I loved the art style. It's kind of her just interactions with people within life, but she's really like sassy and sarcastic. I love the end picture as well, which if you like... Halloween like me then you'll appreciate it with her dancing with like a Halloween man I loved it I absolutely loved it thank you so much Graham for sending this to me because I'd never heard about this at all but I loved it so much now all I have left is the Booker Prize books so these prize these books won the Booker Prize the long list for this year I got all of these free from the publishers just gonna say that if I had bought all the books on the Booker Prize long list there are 13 books and they retail about 10 pounds or 14 pounds each so let's say they're 10 pounds each that's 130 pounds on books I couldn't do it I couldn't have done this project at all so I got sent all of these books for free from the publishers so just saying that but I you know I tore some of these books apart maybe the publishers wish I hadn't read them I don't know but I just gave very honest opinions on them. I've also done individual book reviews on every one of these books so if you've already seen them feel free to click off now but I'm just going to recap each of them. So this is Girl, Woman, Other and this is a kind of short story collection it kind of feels of different women's lives. So it will start with one woman telling her story and then the next paragraph, next chapter sorry is her daughter telling her story and then her daughter's friend and then someone else and so it goes through all these different women's stories and they're all very different stories. I quite enjoyed this, I thought this was quite an interesting book. There were some people's stories that I connected to more that I liked more because it did feel like a short story collection. You can't like all the stories in a short story collection. It felt like that. I felt like this was a good okay book. I then read, oh actually I'm going to save the best to last, so that my favourite book on the Booker Prize long list this year, I'm going to save that to last and I hope it wins the Booker Prize so much. So, the other books were Lanny by Max Porter, this is about a English village and in this English village there's a little boy called Lanny and his parents and Lanny is getting art lessons from an older man in the town who's known as Mad Pete who's this eccentric artist and so it's about this little boy Lanny who he's a little bit eccentric himself and his friendship with this like mad artist. There's also a monster and a monster lives in the woods and no one really knows about the monster so it goes into that and then Lanny goes missing and no one knows where he is. So when Lanny went missing, it went into everything that happens, like everyone who's judged within the village and who could it have been? And then it goes into magical realism, weirdness, and I really liked it. I thought it was a really cute read. At times it was kind of like devastating and a bit shocking, but overall it was a cute, nice read that I did actually enjoy. I then read The Wall, which is by John Lancaster, and this is a set in the, a dystopian future where the UK has a wall all around it and people who are born after a certain time have to spend two years of their life on the wall, it's mandatory, and you guard the wall from people who are called the Others, and Others are people who come on boats and try and come over the wall. So it's kind of to do with climate change, refugee crisis, the wall, meaning in Donald Trump terms, and everything that we're doing now on the planet, like Brexit and everything, how that could affect us in the future, and maybe some people do believe that this could be real life. This just didn't appeal to me at all, but I did think it was well written. If that plot though is something that appeals to you, definitely go and read it because I felt like it was well written it just wasn't my kind of book I then read Night Boat to Tangier by Kevin Barry this is about two ex-criminals who are waiting in a port for one of the men's missing daughter to come through the port so she's she's been missing he's lost contact with her and he's just hoping that if he sits in this port and starts asking people hopefully one day she'll walk through the port and he'll just see her and they'll be reunited but this is filled with snapshots throughout their life of all the things that they've done bad within their lives and how their lives have gone terribly wrong and how he has now become estranged from his daughter. 
I didn't really connect to this at all. I felt that there was a lot of swearing and I'm glad people agreed with me because when I do my book review of this, I was like, this is just such a personal thing and I don't want people to think I'm like a, you know, school matron and everything. But people did agree with me that if they're swearing like every other line, I just, I zone out, I lose any kind of passion to pick this book up. And every, almost every like, page had swearing on it and really graphic swearing and I just for such a small book I just thought like it was kind of shoehorned in there and I, I didn't like that I didn't connect to any of the characters I didn't think it was really written that well for me to like and my kind of style that I like I didn't like this book to be perfectly honest with you and now I'm going to end the video I'm going to hold this book up like Simba this book has got to win the booker prize ah the circle of books and orchestra of minorities ah oh my god this book is so so good so this is set in nigeria and it's about a man who he's a chicken farmer and one day he's driving home and he sees a woman is about to throw herself off a bridge and commit suicide so he gets out of his van and he has just bought two chickens that like mean quite a lot to him and he throws the birds over the bridge to show the woman that if you you kill yourself look what's happened to these birds how like they've gone to their death and they're mangled and everything that's what's going to happen to you to kind of shock her to not kill herself then those two people their paths come together and him and her fall in love but he is he doesn't have any parents anymore and he's a like poultry farmer but her family is very wealthy and she's very well educated and she's going to become a pharmacist and everything so her family completely reject him and say we don't want you having anything to do with her whatsoever so then he decides that he's going to go off to university and his friend has told him about like this university that he can go to in Cyprus so he goes off to that university and he is completely tricked and conned and it leads to devastating things and it's all devastating and it is just so well written it is incredible i absolutely love this book this book broke my heart several times throughout reading it i just thought it was absolutely amazing and there is something within it which is igbu cosmology which is kind of a belief system in nigeria and it has that throughout the book so the idea that you're you have a, a spirit living within you but it's not your spirit so the book is actually not told from our main character's point of view it's told from a spirit living within him but it's not his spirit so we all have our own souls and our own spirit but then we also have this other spirit who use our bodies as a host body and so this like spirit living within him is completely like objective to the whole thing and can give him advice and try and help him in a certain path but can't make him do something differently so you have throughout it your narrator is this spirit who you feel like is telling like a higher god all the things that he's doing wrong and foreseeing stuff and recounting stuff to you so saying you know don't judge him harshly listen to the whole tale so like amazing with this spirit like it's so good and after after, like I finished reading it I did my review and everything and I said I gushed and I was like oh my god I absolutely love it and I feel like I love it even more and even more when I think about different scenes within it and I think about like the spirit and the connection with the spirit and everything and how well it was told and just how beautiful it was written oh my god this has to if this doesn't get shortlisted I don't know what I'm gonna do <laughs> like I just I adore this. I could not recommend this book enough. It's so clever and the spirit telling, oh my God, I'm gonna stop talking about it because I could just go on for another 20 minutes. But I loved this book so much, absolutely adored it. So I hope this wins the Booker Prize. Tell me what you think of these books. Tell me also if you are reading any books from the Booker Prize this year. These are all the books that I'm gonna be able to get to before the shortlist is announced because it's announced in like a few days so I don't have time to read any more books. But if there are any books that are on the shortlist that I have not read, then I will definitely pick them up. There's no, I'll just say it here, like I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna do a separate video. There's no books that I'm really like, oh, these books have to make the shortlist apart from an August of minorities like that's kind of it like the others I didn't really connect to that much so it's only this book that I really care about and I'm rooting for like everyone else who's doing the book of prize they're all like professional like I've got a whole list of books that can make the shortlist that I want to I'm just like there's just one book there's just one book to end them all this one book so I'm gonna just clutch this book like a baby and end the video here so I'll see you again soon for another video